Hello again, witchy people. I've been asked a question and it's, well, I've been asked several questions actually, uh, <clears throat> but one of the questions I was asked was my opinions and my thoughts on flying ointment. Now, before I even say and, and carry on with any of this conversation, I will admit out loud, however you want to describe me, call me a prude, a square, totally uncool, whatever. I don't do drugs. I have never knowingly touched hard drugs. I've been drugged once. Um, <laughs> luckily, I was okay. Um, but I know I'm not a drug taker. I, I very rarely drink. When I do drink, I don't get drunk. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't even smoke anymore. <laughs> you know, we're talking normal cigarettes here. Um, I used to smoke herbal cigarettes, and I don't mean the Mary Jane kind. I am talking real herbal cigarettes with herbs in rather than tobacco that are perfectly legal to smoke. And why am I saying this? I don't know. Anyway, flying ointment. Now, obviously, uh, we're told in some history books of witches who use these psychotropic hallucinogenic drugs in i think it was pig pig's fat some kind of lard or fat and coated the ends of their brooms and oh how can i put this politely then played hide it in the hoo-ha with their broomsticks I don't think this should be particularly attributed to witches. <laughs> um, it may have been something that happened, I'm not denying that, but I can't see this as being a, a widespread thing, okay? But did it happen? Yes, because there are plenty of <clears throat> sources throughout history that we know people took these psychotropic or hallucinogenic drugs, plants, herbs, to give themselves hallucinations and um, peyote mushrooms, uh, peyote, they call them peyote uh, mushrooms, it's actually cactus, I think. Whether that was ingested in tea or whether you cut your skin and rubbed the plant uh, directly into the, your, your skin and into the bloodstream. Um, was used to, I mean, I can't remember what culture called it, the um, the spirit plant, because it brought you closer to deity, a bit, bit Aldous Huxley sort of thing, you know. Um, anyway, we all know that this happened. I mean, the ancient Greeks, the ancient Romans, everyone, every culture has had, most cultures have, have had this way of using certain drugs and obviously from plants, to reach the divine or to hallucinate to receive messages the problem i have with that is now bear in mind i'm a qualified herbalist herbologist <laughs> and i grow these plants that are supposedly used in historical uh, flying ointments I grow henbane, datura, um, hemlock, wolfsbane. Um, I haven't got any now, but I did have belladonna. Um, and many others. And I would not use them. I don't think it's safe to ingest or even rub these creams onto your hands. Simply because if you have a cut in your hand, as you can see, I, I do, I suffer from something called psoriasical arthritis. So my skin cracks. Now, you have no way of monitoring the dose of something that you're taking in. And the dose will also, you know, and we're talking about a dose here that can be anything from, oh, I feel a bit happy to, oh, this is amazing to, oh, good grief, I'm dead. <laughs> depends on your weight, your age, uh, your, your sex, your activity, so many different things. You cannot make a, a judgment call on whether you live or die like that. 
So for that part, no, I don't agree. If we're talking about true flying ointments, no. I, I couldn't condone the use. However, what do I use? Um, the same as with PAT, which bear in mind, some of the native uh, Americans used and in Mexico is being used for all sorts from toothache to childbirth, you know, to help ease pain and such like. So it, it's not, I'm not comparing that to a, a, something deadly. Um, and, and obviously it is used, mescaline is used, uh, which you get from the peyote plant, is used in an awful lot of, is the basis of a lot of medications. However, um, I do drink certain teas and such like to, if you like, put me in a state of mind. There are certain scents that I like to burn. Um, patchouli, lilac, sandalwood especially. Um, I sometimes burn wormwood and um oh brain fart ding ding oh it grows outside <laughs> i'll come back to that but I, I do burn certain types of wood uh which us you can't burn them in closed spaces because the fumes can be uh, they can make you seriously ill there are certain teas i do drink though and most of the teas i drink are pretty disgusting tasting if i'm honest so I tend to sweeten them with either borage flowers or hibiscus flowers. And that kind of sweetens them. Um, some of the teas that I like to drink, and I will try and list them, see if I can remember them all. <laughs> um, there are, oh, excuse me one moment. Sneeze? No. <laughs> I thought I was going to sneeze. So, uh, mugwort tea is one of the best ones it puts you in a kind of state of relaxation and openness if you like for communication and that is obviously not just communication I'm talking about people I'm talking about the other side if you like to put it that way uh, valerian because it does it's it's a very relaxing um, herb uh, so I'm feeling very, very thirsty. I'm gonna. <laughs> okay. Um, lemon balm. Valerian and lemon balm mixed. Um, surprisingly, lemon balm does make for a very, it can be very relaxing. Nettle, um, because it's an antioxidant, but it's also cleansing, and I feel like it does, it is cleansing, as in ritually cleansing dandelion root because it's very good for focus so dandelion root tea um if i have dandelion root i will mix it once again with cinnamon and sometimes hibiscus to improve the taste but the best one is mugwort if you can get mugwort tea uh, organic mugwort tea it's also caffeine free which is obviously quite important to some people so yes i do i do use herbs to help thin the veil, if you like, to help me straddle the he straddle the hedge. Um, sometimes just a certain type of meditation, sort of bringing yourself into school. You don't need anything else. Um, you, you don't need any outside influences. It can be just all in yourself. But once again, I would not use anything if I thought it could be deadly. Uh, foxglove is another one. <clears throat> uh, foxglove I, I wouldn't use simply because I, I do have a heart murmur. I do have problems with my heart. So I wouldn't use foxglove. And I think this is something we all have to think about. Now you can make a really nice fake flying ointment. And it will be a fake flying ointment because it's not going to give you hallucinations to make you fly. It'll make you feel like you're flying or traversing the hedge. Um, you know, I've mentioned Aldous Huxley. I'll mention him again. Um, oh, what is that Aldous Huxley book called? The Doors of Perception? Something like that. Basically, Aldous Huxley was this scientist who took drugs 
to try and see if it could get him closer to divinity. Uh, all in the name of science, of course. <laughs> um, I, I think, and these were drugs that were, were, were um, psychotropic and hallucinogenic drugs that were accepted and that people do use, like cocaine, morphine, heroin, that sort of thing. When it comes down to what you take by yourself, from your garden or anything else, I think it's too dangerous and I would not advise it and I would not use it. I think if it's something they used historically many, many years ago, fair enough. But we have a better knowledge of what is dangerous these days and we do not have the knowledge that our ancestors had about just how dangerous these drugs are and how to use them in the best possible manner and in the safest manner. So I would not use anything like that. But I do, as far as using things like, like I said, tea and such like, I know, I know of people who do smoke marijuana and cannabis to put them into that relaxed state. And if that's what you want to do, then I, I think that's that's up to you. Personally, it's not something I could do. Now, am I talking as a hedge witch or as a person? In general, both. Because I don't think you can be, you know, a hedge witch isn't a way of life. It is who you are for the most part. So, flying ointments, yay or nay? Nay. Things to help you straddle the hedge and to go on your spirit wanderings or whatever you like to call them yes i i do think that's it's valid and like i said i use them myself but i usually use tea and i use incense or i burn herbs um i don't i'm still trying to think of the name of that herb that i've got in my garden that i grow so much of because I'm, I'm having a really bad brain day <laughs> If I remember, I will put it in the description below. I actually sell it in my store, so I should remember it. Um, but I think you even have to be careful then because the um, the vapour and the smoke from some of these things that you burn can be extremely dangerous. So always err on the side of caution. Never, ever risk anything. Um, if you think there is a flying ointment out there that you know you can rub into your skin i'm not saying to do anything else with it and you think it's perfectly safe then you must take that risk by yourself personally i wouldn't even if it claims it did not have um baneful herbs in it or dangerous herbs in it i don't think i would use it um life's too precious really <laughs> You know and I, I think that's it I, I could go further but I think I've explained enough so no yay or nay I say nay to flying ointment however I if you like flying tea if you like hallucinogenic teas they're not exactly hallucinogenic but things to aid relaxation focus and to open your mind then yes but in a safe way I wouldn't suggest or for myself do anything that was uh, particularly dangerous but like I said you know you can call me square uncool you know a bit of a prude anything like that that's fine by me I'm, I'm <laughs> I'd like to be safe <laughs> um, yes so there we go that's my hedge witch view on flying ointment <coughs> privet <laughs> uh, privet you can burn privet to help <laughs> open the doors to the dead oh dear but yes it is um very the smoke can be quite dangerous so uh, i would suggest to be very very careful with that um never burn a lot and always in open space never in enclosed space open windows and be very very safe there you go it was privet <laughs> right that's it i'm going now i think i've rambled enough 
Thank you for watching, witchy people. I will be back soon. Bye for now.